Good evening, soldiers of the Most High God. Warriors of the third dimension. Ah, yes. This is the night the Lord has made and we will rejoice. Amen? Amen. Before you kill somebody. <laughs> oh, glory. Romans chapter 12. Wonderful times and seasons we're in. Seems like the Democratic Party just won't give up. They won't surrender because they're controlled like puppets of Satan's kingdom. Amazing to me. Simply amazing to watch Satan's hand in all of these areas. Like he thinks he's going to outwit daddy. Ain't going to happen. Oh, yes. Romans 12, verse 3. Is everybody there? <laughs> you know, there's the testimony of everybody's heard the good Samaritan, you know. There's a dude from Samaria. <laughs> just in case you didn't know that. In this Samaritan, Jesus used this guy as an example in the parable. And all the religious dudes and all of these wealthy dudes and whatever walked by this dude that was beat up and banded on the side. And this one guy came by, he's a Samaritan. And he took this dude and he brought him to a hotel. Let him have room service and everything. Paid for it all, made sure he's taken care of, and he let the, the guy at the hotel know, look at if there's anything more this guy needs, just let me know. There was something that he did. He went the extra mile. And I can tell you that right now God is asking us to go the extra mile. Amen. Going the extra mile causes an individual to shed more flesh. You know, same thing when, you, uh, when you're playing sports or you're doing something and you're getting exhausted and you're waiting for that second wind to kick in and you go the extra mile. Going the extra mile on everything. He's asking us to go the extra mile to press him more to his presence. He's asking to go the extra mile for what, in righteousness. He's asking us to go the extra mile and denying ourselves in that extra mile mile he's asking us to do right now he's asking us to penetrate the powers of darkness going in further and to maintain a consistency in everything that we do you know most people can't even be consistent and and in this he is going to reward those that are consistent one of the things that we will see is the reward of the wicked. Many people are missing so many things that's going on because they're still so caught up in their everyday busy life that they're missing what's really going on. They don't see it. And that's because the enemy comes to bring blinders. But God is asking us to go the extra mile, and he's already given us the measure of faith to do it. In verse 3, let's speak it. For I say through the grace given to me to everyone who is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a what? A measure of faith. He is, this measure of faith is like a key that goes in an ignition in a car. It must be turned on to get activated and started, then it goes beyond. In other words, without that measure of faith, you can't even get started. But he's asking us to go beyond measure, and it's like going the extra mile. So what he's asking us to do is go beyond the measure of faith that has been given to us, 
and grow in faith. Is everybody okay? Verse 4, For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberally. He who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without hypocrisy, abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love, in honor giving preference to one another. Not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints given to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. And do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. And if possible, as much as depends on you, live peacefully with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him drink. For in so doing, you will reap Heap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Again, this measure of faith that has been given to us, God is asking us to go beyond that measure. Everyone say beyond measure. So there are certain things he's asking us. He says, listen, love all. Love all. These are the areas where we are going beyond the measure of faith. We're growing in faith. We're increasing faith. Love all. Hate evil. Why? Because if you don't, you're decreasing, not increasing. Amen? Serving the Lord. In other words, laboring unto him. Your labor is not unto man. It's unto God. When you think it's unto man, you want a reward. You want to be recognized. Then you're not going beyond measure. In fact, you're losing faith instead of gaining it. Rejoice in your future. I'm going to give you 12 areas where he's asking us to grow. 12 is a representation of government. The word says, let your, the kingdom come and will be done. And there's peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost, which is the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is within us. It is a government within me and you. We are part of a total government, but we are all part of the government of the kingdom of God. Again, the first one is love all. The second one is hate evil. The third one is labor unto him. Love all, hate evil, labor unto him. Rejoice in your future. Be patient and endure. Six. Be steadfast in prayer. Meeting the needs of others before yourself. Eight. 
Avoid worldly mindsets. Number nine, associate with the humble and reject the proud. <laughs> associate with the humble and reject the proud. Repay no evil. In other words, hold no grudges, unforgiveness, or bitterness towards anyone. Respect all things, people, with understanding. and maintain peace of mind, heart, and will. Twelve attributes. These are things that are going to show us if we are growing, going beyond measure or not. Amen? Remember he says what? Feed your enemy. If he's thirsty, give him water. If he's hungry, whatever. Don't repay evil, overcome evil with good. All of these things are attributes in the area where he's saying, look, you want to grow in, measure, grow in faith? Let's go beyond measure. That's what he's asking us to do. Going the extra mile, in other words, you're going to deny yourself even more. Colossians 2. Beyond measure. Colossians 2 and verse 4. Now this I say, lest anyone should deceive you with persuasive words. For though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order. Everyone say divine order. Divine order. And steadfastness of your faith in Christ, that's your connection in Christ. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught abounding in it with thanksgiving. But beware, lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the traditions of men and according to the basic principles of the world, not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are what? Complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. We are complete in him. That's where it's important why we abide in him. He says, beware of human reasoning and traditions of men. Beware of human reasoning and traditions of men according to the worldly ways. One of the reasons he's telling us in, is because these things set limitations on believers. They're, and what it does is it prevents them from going beyond the measure of faith we required for whatever it is he's calling us to do. Somebody understand that? Beware of human reasoning and traditions of men according to the worldly ways that set limitations on believers not able to go beyond the measure of faith granted to them or given to us what we're supposed to do. In John 10. John 10, verse 9. Is everybody okay? 
beyond measure. Verse 9, I am the door, and if anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go out, go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it, what? More abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Without going beyond measures, you can't reach life abundance. You must go beyond the measures. That means you must grow in faith. You must be able to see through the natural. So you're seeing through the natural, but you're discerning in what is unseen and what is seen at the same time. Does everybody understand that? In 1 Peter chapter 1. Beyond measure. So we just confirmed that the devil's out to steal, kill, and destroy, isn't he? I don't think some people take that too serious. If they did, churches would be filled. Oh, happy days. First Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Therefore, what? Gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former loss as in your ignorance. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all of your conduct. Because it is written, be holy, for I am holy. And if you call on the Father who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay in this realm here in fear knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold, but from your aimless conduct received by traditions from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in his last times for us, who through him believe in God who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and your hope are in God. He's telling us, protect your thoughts. Protect them. Make sure that they are aligned with the mind of Christ. And make sure you, your conduct is Christ-like. See, if our conduct is not Christ-like, it's called rebellion. It's a rebellious conduct. And the Word tells us that rebellion is a form of witchcraft. Amen. Amen? What happens when an individual's conduct is not according to Christ? It brings them into captivity, which we call bondage. Bondage is limitations. So bondage is limitations to where people cannot live beyond measure, but they live beyond their means. Mm. Psalm 68. Oh, hallelujah. Psalm 68. In 
in verse 5 and 6. Let's speak it. A father of the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy habitation. God sets the solidarity in families. He brings out those who are bound into prosperity. But the rebellious dwell in a what? Dry land. Wow. Rebellious in a dry land. This is when individuals become dry. They become emotional. No longer able to live or be led by the Holy Spirit, but they are led by emotion because they're dry. And emotion is what's influencing them. How they feel. Because the Spirit isn't. Amen? Does everybody get that? Live by emotions and not by the Spirit. Because they're dry. And it all originated because they rejected a Christ-like character. Romans 8. In verse 12. Romans 8, 12. Let's speak it. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh, for if you live according to the flesh, you're going to die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage, which brings limitations, amen, again to what? Fear. So we know that fear will bring limitations. But you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then what? Heirs and heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ if... We indeed suffer with him that we may also be glorified together. Powerful. So fear will set limitations from growing beyond measure of faith. And it causes people to live beyond their means or their needs. Falling into debt and more bondage. That's how the enemy operates. Because an individual then is still looking for a fulfillment and they usually start to chase money instead of God. Or fame or whatever else. In James 3. In James chapter 3. Again, fear sets limitations from going beyond the measure of faith, causing people to live beyond their means and their needs, falling into debt and more bondage. James 3.13. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. James 3.13, let's speak it. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by what? Good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every Evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy, and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. This is so powerful. So he says, look, at worldly wisdom has nothing to do with godly wisdom. Nothing. 
You may have all the wisdom of the world. You may be a powerful businessman or woman. You may know how to do all of these wonderful things in this world, but it has nothing to do with godly wisdom. Does everybody understand that? Because godly wisdom produces Christ's character. If it's not producing Christ's character, it's not godly wisdom. And it goes beyond the measure of faith. Again, worldly wisdom rejects godly wisdom. First Timothy 6. Beyond measure. First Timothy six six. You know, I, I I just I don't know, but I keep sensing the Lord just saying, you know, you, we we need to go beyond the measure, not only in the faith but trust. Trust. Trust, trust. In verse 6, now godliness with contentment is what? Great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing with these, we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is, the, is a root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But you, O man and woman of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness, which is going beyond measure. Fight a good fight of faith. Lay hold of the on eternal life to which you were called and have confessed a good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I urge you in the sight of God who gives life to all things and before Christ Jesus who witnessed the good confession before Pontius Pilate that you keep this commandment without spot, blameless, until our Lord Jesus Christ appearing which he will manifest in his own time, he who is the blessed and only potent King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality dwelling in an unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see, to whom be honor and everlasting power. Amen. Again, the love of money has no beyond measures. Many believe they need money to get something done. If you live beyond the measure of faith, <laughs> it will get done. Why? Because God makes a way where there seems to be no way. Amen? He'll move on some. He'll do something. He's got all the resources and he's got all the connections. He's got it all. Something will happen. One of the problems with is people are wanting it to happen now. Welcome to the earth. It's the now, people. But remember, we are living from the future, not from the past. So all things are available to you and me. We are blessed with every spiritual blessing. We're seated in heavenly places. We have access to everything. But again, without going beyond the measure of faith, access is not reached. 1 Peter 5. That's why many people can talk, but they can't walk it. Amen. 1 Peter 5, 5. Likewise, you younger people, 
Submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to what? One another. And be clothed with humility, for God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may what? Exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he what? He cares for you. Humble is living beyond yourself, to be humble. Living beyond yourself, living beyond your abilities, able to deny yourself, step into Christ. And the anointing, <laughs> that way releasing your hold, that's where of all cares, into the hands of God. Knowing what he wants will come to pass. That's why we release these things. Anything God brings is a lifetime warranty. until we get our little pause in it, then it becomes, and we break the warranty. <laughs> you know, it's the same thing in everything. You know, it says, listen, it's, you just return it, and you, it's a lifetime warranty when you buy something, as long as you don't try to fix it. If you open it up and you try to fix it, warranty is no good. Same thing in the spirit realm. Same thing with the kingdom of God. God says, your hand's in it, mine aren't. Philippians 2. Oh, happy days. Beyond measure. And it really is exciting when his plan comes together. <laughs> Verse 1. Therefore, if there's any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, and of one mind, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each one esteem others better than themselves. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interests of others. And let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, whom being a form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself with no reputation, taking a form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. Selfish ambitions cause a life of living beyond your means, causing harm to yourself and others, because an individual lives a life of anxiousness and not patience. In verse 12, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who does what? It is God who works in you to both to what? To will and to do. Everyone say to will, to will. and to do for his good pleasure. So God's working in us to will and to do in a life living beyond measure with no limitations. There's no limitations in that. What does he say here? He warns us. He says, look, be careful. Do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless, children of God, without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world and holding fast a word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Powerful. God works in us to will and to do in a life of living beyond measure with no limitations. In Romans 8. Simple teaching. 
preparation, positioning. I look at this as a positioning teaching. He's trying to get us positioned. Romans 8, 36. Is everybody there? As it is written, for your sake we are what? We are killed all day long, praise God, because we love to suffer. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all things we are what? More than conquerors through him who loved us. Now, can you be more than a conqueror if you're not living beyond the measure? No. You become a wimp. Grumbling, complaining, blaming. Always thinking nothing's going to happen. Negative. Carnal. And no fun. <laughs> Verse 38, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. It says we are more than conquerors. Well, you're not going to be a more than a conqueror if you're not living beyond measure. What? The measure that was granted to you from the beginning. Our faith should be growing. Colossians 3, and we'll close here. If your faith is growing, your trust is growing. If your trust is growing, your relationship is growing. Colossians 3 and verse 1. We'll speak the first seven verses. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. You died. In other words, our life is hidden in him. That means we're living from the future. Amen? But you can't think that way if you're not living beyond the measure. See, it all depends on how you're thinking. Remember, we talked about as a man thinks, so he is. So if you're not living beyond the measure of faith that God has given you, then you're more carnal. Does everybody understand that? You're not able to see the things through. You're not able to discern what is unseen and what is seen at the same time. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things of the earth. Verse 3. For you died. Everyone said, I died. And your life is hidden with him in Christ, in God. When Christ, who is our life, you know, think about it. Christ, who is our life. Remember, he bought our life. You don't own it. We don't own our life no more. When people try to live their life, they don't live in faith. Not at all. They're still controlling. They're in a life of control. Oh, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ and God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to what? Put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. And do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and 
in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering. Is that beyond measure? Yes. It said nothing about how you feel here. Well, I don't feel that way too bad. Nobody's asking. God never showed up and asked you how you felt. Amen? He said, here it is. 13. <laughs> Bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint, put it in the garbage. Against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be what? Thankful. But of course, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in what? All wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. We are hidden in Christ. We are living from the future. If you are living from the future to the present, you are living beyond measure of faith. Amen? Amen. We're to be living beyond the measure of faith now. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let us bring a self-examination to the measure of faith we are living these days. Because you are very concerned with the genuineness of our faith. Genuineness has been associated with living beyond the measure granted to us. Who are we actually trusting? So, Lord, again, let your word that was imparted in each and every one of us, the seed of truth and righteousness, grow and bear fruit for your glory in each and every one. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.